At Zimmer and Peacock, we appreciate that there's a strong interest these days in teaching um, electrochemistry, electroanalytical techniques, and teaching electrochemical sensors. So when you're teaching the theory of um, electrochemistry, people often teach the uh, method called cyclovoltammetry. And in cyclovoltammetry, there's, you know, there's theory. And one of the theories is that the peak-to-peak -peak separation in a reversible redox process, and by that, for example, the um, oxidation of ferrocyanide to ferricyanide and the reduction of ferricyanide to ferrocyanide, that should have a peak-to-peak -peak separation in cyclovoltammetry of something like 59 millivolts. Um, if you're unfamiliar with cyclovoltammetry, Zimmer and Peacock does run something called the ZP Academy. Um, and on the ZP Academy, there's a couple of free courses on electrochemistry and techniques for electrochemical biosensor developers. So please take a look at that. There is an animation running, a very small animation running in this image showing you what a cyclovoltamogram looks like as you gather it in real time. But to put back to the point, the peak-to-peak -peak separation in for a reversible one electron process would be expected to be about 59 millivolts. Um, and at ZP, we have an electrode system in some ways specific for educationalists that they can use it in teaching labs. And we've got some data up here where we have the cycle of um of our um, electrode used to oxidize five millimolar of um, ferricyanide in a one, milli one molar KCL solution. A couple of things to note that with the um, scan rate at something like 10 millivolts per second, our peak-to-peak -peak separation is 75 millivolts, which is really similar to the larger voltammogram that we have on this page. That's fairly close to the 59 millivolts that we're expecting um, in theory. Now, what's nice about the screen printed electrode from an educationalist's perspective is um, these screen printed electrodes, they contain the counter electrode, the working electrode, and the reference electrode. So it's very, let's say, compact. Um, when you're using something like a glassy carbon electrode, you need a glassy carbon electrode, which can sometimes be more than 200 US dollars. You might need a silver silver chloride reference electrode, which could be something like 50 US dollars. And then you sometimes have a, like a counter electrode, which is sometimes is a platinum gauze, which is really quite expensive, or people might be using a lower cost material. But it's not unrealistic to say that there's more than $300 worth of materials that you need to put into the electrochemical cell in order to do the experiment. So, you know, if you have a room full of students, realistically, you know, each student, if they were going to work in parallel, would need thousands of US dollars worth of um, electrodes um, in order to be running in parallel. Now, we understand you to set up a workstation and then they would rotate through it. But with a screen printer electrode, you can actually almost give each student a screen printer electrode and they can use it themselves and even break it themselves. And it's no real, let's say, um, big issue. Um, so let me sort of jump into this slide and say, OK, so people like to teach electroanalytical techniques. Um, if they're teaching a theoretical class, they might talk about cyclovoltammetry. They will teach people that the peak to peak separation is something like 59 millivolts. They'll also teach them that for a sort of reversible one electron transfer process, um, the peak height of the anodic and cathodic peak is proportional to the square root of the scan rate. Now, the, they call this, the, I think, the randall sevick equation. The reason for it is actually because the process is under diffusion control. Um, and so it's sort of derived from fixed laws of diffusion. But what we've done is... Um, in one of these cyclovoltammograms, you can see that we've got um, cyclovoltammogram at 10, 20, 50, 100 millivolts. Um, the peak goes up, but it's not going up linearly. It's going up with the square root of scan rate. And we've plotted the anodic and cathodic peaks. And you can see that that is very much true. You know, that there's very much a straight line um, going through all those different data points associated with different scan rates. So we're essentially happy with that. There's also something else to notice as well is that the um, peak height of the anodic um, wave or curve is the same as the peak height of the cathodic curve as well. So everything feels quite reversible. So the reason we bring this up then is that people are teaching these techniques. Traditionally, they would have done it on glassy carbon electrodes, for example.
but uh, we're saying here that actually you can use screen printed electrodes and you can have pretty well close to theoretical values and so you can kind of reinforce the um, teaching in the lecture theater with practicals in the lab and the nice thing about this as well is um, is really the price point so we sell a particular electrode for educational purposes and you can get several of these electrodes for quite uh, low cost money okay thanks very much